External factors known as the social determinants of health impact the health of individuals, including substance use. This video will examine social determinants as they affect substance use in tribal communities. Our communities are very, very rural. In the winter time, you may not be able to get out. Last winter, we had a storm that closed down one of our communities for a solid week. People couldn't travel because the power lines were down, there were snowed in, there was no access to water. Last year, there was one girl that needed supplies and there was no way I was going to get it to her crossing. Then I'm um, nothing. I think we just barely got our electricity on. The blades, I don't even think the blades went by yet. When Tina come through, blizzarding. She was down there at the crossing. All I had to do was run and go get it. So what she did was she walked. It wasn't that far, but it was, you know, she walked to the crossing just to come and get her needs that she needed. Like she needed pampers for her baby. So she walked because I, I couldn't drive. The, the, the roads were, they were plugged. You know, there was no way I could get in there. Right there, I knew, you know, that that woman is going to be in my life for a while. And she's been ever since. And Thank God every day for having a moment like that in my life. I do. Really, I do. If it wasn't for her, uh, my kids would go out without. And I'd probably, I probably wouldn't even be trying if I had to look at my kids knowing that I couldn't do nothing for them, you know, but I know somebody else reaches out that far just to help me when I'm, when I don't have nothing, you know. So the social determinants of health is a huge part of working in public health, and that's really looking at how do external forces or external factors affect the individual. So that could be anything from neighborhoods to poverty, to job opportunities, to, you know, safe roads, things like that. Every single one of our communities experiences disparity in each of the, the social determinants of health. The social determinants of health can be explained through the socio-ecological model, or SEM. This framework breaks down how individuals are affected by their societies and policies, communities, and interpersonal relationships, like family and friends. Native Americans experience multiple factors at each level of the SEM that affect their overall health and well-being, particularly around substance use. These factors can have negative effects on health or can be positive, serving as protective factors. Starting at the societal level, these include historical or intergenerational trauma and criminalization of substance use. There's a lot of historical trauma that I think tribal members are facing, historical loss of land, of culture, and that's passed down generation to generation. And so again, getting back to that idea of self-medicating, alcohol can play a role in that. We believe that we have to change some of the laws surrounding substance use that penalize mothers, that give American Indian women overrepresentation in our prison systems. So we're working to put together a case for legislative change. And Healthy Start is very much a part of that, although the effort is being spearheaded really by the Tribal Epidemiology Center. We're part of that, collecting that data and that sort of thing. The next level of the SEM is the community, which includes the availability and quality of resources within an individual's neighborhood or geographic area, such as transportation and partnerships between community programs. I think transportation in our state and in rural areas is a major barrier for moms to get prenatal care. The winter months are a little bit more challenging than what the summer months are. Their vehicles won't start, they need appointments, so you're kind of running all the time during the winter, trying to get them to their WIC appointments, their prenatal appointments, you know, things like that, yeah. A lot of my clients that I have currently are either single mothers who don't have their partners. Some of them don't have places to live. They're either living with a friend so a lot of the nutritional value, I pretty much give to her. And I do ask that question. 
to see if they're getting food stamps or anything like that. And a lot of them will say yes. I think that those issues, trying to cope with very difficult conditions, often lead to substance use. The greatest strength we have is that we have a lot of help out there. One thing I'm really proud of, I guess, would be the fact that the programs do work very well together. We reach out to each other and we try to, you know, everybody has their strengths and we really try to draw on those strengths. On our reservation, it seems like everybody knows everybody. That partnership just becomes so valuable. You know, working with the community, we have interagency meeting once a month and we meet with all the agencies of the reservation and we talk about what our programs are doing. So if somebody's doing something, we send them there. Because that's what it was a long time ago. It was simple. You know, the, uh, the child was never left alone. It, it, everybody worked with the child. There was, uh, the whole community worked together. And that's what we need to do today is the whole community has to work together with this. It's like a community thing where we work with other programs. If we don't have the means or I'll say education to work with them, there's other programs that do. And we refer them to those programs to try to help. If we can just get one success story out of 10, it's, 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 it's worth it you know, to do all that. Zooming in, the interpersonal level refers to the close relationships that a person has, including with friends, family, and intimate partners. I think a supportive environment always helps with reducing risky drinking. So are there people that, let's say a woman who wants to reduce their drinking, are there supports available that she can seek out to do that? Whether that's with her partner, with her family, with her community. Sometimes it's pressure. We've had moms who healthy start workers have worked to get them out of a situation. A young woman has a baby and she's living in a home where the mom is using or dealing. And, um, and so, you know, getting her into a safe environment is important so that she doesn't get caught up in that and so she can provide a, a, a safe environment for her child. At the individual level, a person's characteristics, knowledge, attitudes, and beliefs affect their likelihood to use substances while pregnant. I think the greatest strength and resiliency factor that our moms have is their tribal heritage. I think that those values, those cultural values of respect and honor and strength and bravery, um, I think are our greatest strength. I think the big thing is definitely culture. So culture has been vital in addressing a lot of different social determinants of health. And I think enough research studies have shown that being involved in culture can be very much a protective factor for women and families and, and tribal members. I think that we really need to understand that when people use, they are looking for something. They are trying to, to deal and to cope with a particular problem. And whatever that problem may be, it's different for, for every person. They need more helpful programs instead of trying to take your baby away all the time. You know, they need to help you, give you something to look forward to. So I'm glad, I'm so happy there's Healthy Start. I really am, um, changed my life a lot. Addressing the social determinants of health can take time and investment, but focusing on them can strengthen the positive factors within tribal communities that help to prevent substance use during pregnancy. Healthy Start plays an important role in addressing social determinants by providing its clients with coordinated case management and promoting the overall health and wellness of their communities. The Alcohol and Substance Exposed Pregnancy Prevention Initiative, or ASTEP, offers training and technical assistance designed to increase your understanding of the impacts of fetal exposure to alcohol and other drugs and strengthen your capacity to engage in effective prevention and early identification activities in your community. To learn more, visit healthystartepic.org slash ASTEP.